LED chasing USB power cables. Now, I say they're LED, but the linearity, I'll show you in a moment these in the dark, the linearity from one end to the other makes me wonder what on earth is this material? I think it's side glow fiber optic, but if it is, it's the best side glow fiber optic I've seen in a very long time. So these came from One Beyond in the UK, formerly called One Below. Uh, the replacement for Pound World, which kind of went out of business. And uh, I have to say it's one of my favourite shops at the moment. Their stock is very interesting. Lots of technical stuff. So let me cut to the chase here and show you these in the dark. One moment, please. Here is what they look like in the dark, which is very, very good. Uh, note the linearity of the light from one end. This is the presumably the source, the LED end. And at the other end, I don't know if they get LEDs in here as well, lighting from the other end, but the linearity along the full length is surprising. It's very, very good. Very impressive. So uh, let's take one apart and see what's inside. Watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. The light is back. Things worthy of note. The red one only draws 32 milliamps. The blue one draws 68 milliamps. Now, I get the feeling there's uh, three LEDs in here. And if that is the case, oh, this one's fairly notably warmer. Uh, if that is the case, then they're potentially pushing them quite hard. But having said that, um, only one is lit at a time if it's the chasing uh, effect. So that would be roughly about 20 milliamps per LED. Let's take the blue one apart and see what's inside it. So how well is this going to come apart? I think I shall grip it with a pair of pliers. This may result in mass destruction. If it happens, it happens. I'm not sure if this is the correct way to do this. Oh, it's all very chewy. This doesn't look like it's the correct way to do it. This may be about to cause carnage. Uh, I think this is about to cause carnage. Hmm, this is causing carnage. I wonder if I can nibble into the metal. I don't think I'm going to be able to easily do that. Let's just nibble the plastic away and see if we can just tear into it that way. So I shall stuff... A pair of side cutters up here and nibble into the plastic. If this starts taking too long, I shall pause. Because uh, nobody wants to see someone just faffing around with chewy plastic and destroying stuff too much. Well, maybe you do want to see stuff being destroyed. I should zoom down this. That is filled with glue, which doesn't help. What if I bite in like that? Mm, that's quite promising. What if I just heat it up? That might help as well. Uh, I may try heating it up. One moment, please. Oh, well, that went very smoothly, lied Clive unconvincingly. As you can see from all the shredded metal and plastic and stuff like that, what I'm seeing here already is a little circuit board with a six-pin chip in it and some components. I'm seeing three LEDs and some guides and then what are presumably the fibre optics stuck up the end. Let's take a closer look at this circuit board. One moment, please. And let's explore. There's a little six-pin chip. There's one resistor. I thought the resistor was going to be for limiting current through the LEDs. It is not. I shall zoom in just a tiny bit on this. So this plastic housing here has the four pins on the back. That's actually part of the connector. And on one side, it's got four solder pads that go onto the cables. That's the cables here that go straight along the cable. But it takes the negative and the positive and the positive goes straight to the anodes of all the LEDs, and the negative goes straight to the chip. The positive also goes to the chip via a resistor, um, and then the uh, negatives of the chips are all switched through the chip to the negative rail. That's it, really. Here's a little turrets with the, that go over the LEDs with the fibre optic, but there's something more interesting about them. Let me show you the schematic. Not that it's really a terribly exciting schematic, but it is a schematic nonetheless. A mystery chip, no numbers. 47 ohm, I guess maybe it's got its own built-in voltage regulator. I'm not sure that it's possible it does just have a little Zener diode built in it. The incoming USB supply jumps straight out to the cables. The 47 ohm resistor goes to the chip. The LEDs are switched directly by the outputs of the chip to the zero volt rail. And uh, that's basically it. It's just got a fixed chasing three-channel program in it. It could be a microcontroller. It could be something else. What's interesting is that the fibers are pushed through the sleeve. Um, here it is here. And they don't just pull straight back out. So they're pushed through the sleeve. And then they've clearly been pressed against a very smooth, hot surface. 
and it's caused them to flare out. And then uh, they're pulled back into the housing. That means, A, they don't pop out the housing, but it also means that now you've got that flared section to capture the light. Well, as demonstrated here, the LED light is going straight into the end of the fibre optic. It's just catching as much of that light as possible to fire it along. I did, rather predictably, do that Ghostbuster thing and basically unwound my slinky. And I took the fibre optic out of that uh, sleeving. And it's fine, it's good. A, a fair amount of light still comes out the end of it. I can now demonstrate that one moment. Fibre optic here with the light shining out the end as well as emitting out the side. No, not so visible under the bright bench lights, but this is just a flashlight pointing directly up the end of that fibre. How does it look off? Yeah, it glows quite nicely off camera. Uh, but it's uh, interesting. Unexpected. I mean, I'm really surprised by how efficient this uh, fibre optic is in actually spreading the light out the side. It really does look very linear from one end to the other. It's very good. Uh, so that is it. Not bad at all, given that it's not a hugely expensive product from One and Beyond, so called, because uh, it's one pound and beyond, and that did not cost a pound. That cost a bit more than a pound, but it wasn't that bad. A nice enough uh, system. I do want to ponder about this resistor. Is the Does the chip just have that little internal voltage regulator? Um, I suppose there's one way to find out. One moment, please. So if it did have a Zener diode, you'd expect that if you went from the negative on the circuit board to the other end of that little resistor there, you'd see the voltage being dropped. Uh, so this is the input voltage, which is 5 volts, and this is the output voltage in that resistor, which is also 5 volts. So the resistor doesn't seem to be doing an awful lot. I do wonder if that resistor was originally intended to limit the current through the LEDs. Because they could have done that if they'd put it on, say, the negative instead of the positive. It means that the current flowing being switched by the um, by the chip would have gone down through that resistor. But as it is, they're just relying on the internal impedance of the chip. That can be a bit naughty. But anyway, it is what they've done. What do you expect for the low cost from a, a dollar store, a pound shop? But that is it. A uh, nice little thing. It, it's a visual, ef nice visual effect, and certainly this one, uh, it's got lower current. The red one. Well, I'm not sure how they're doing that, unless they've got extra components in there, or they've got it configured differently. But uh, that is it. The uh, one below, or should I say, one beyond, fiber optic chasing USB charge lead.